Hello everyone, I'm Luis Ortega Paz from UF Health, uh, PCR Online and uh, Error Intervention. And today I have the extreme privilege of hosting uh, Professor Deepak Bhatt. Uh, Professor Deepak Bhatt is the director of uh, the Mount Sinai Fuster Heart Hospital uh, in New York. And he is the Dr. Valentin Fuster Professor of Cardiovascular Medicine at Icon Medical School. Uh, Professor Bart is a well-known clinical trialist, and he presented in the ACC 2025 meeting uh, the late-breaking clinical trial about Ventrasimab, and a specific reversal agent for Tecagrelor. Uh, Professor Bat, thank you for having us, and I would like you if you can make kind of a summary of what you presented uh, in ACC. Well, thanks for having me. It's really a pleasure to be able to speak with you. I had presented as a late-breaker at the American College of Cardiology sessions a trial called Reversit. And this is a trial of a human monoclonal antibody called Ventrasimab. It has been designed to reverse the antiplatelet effects of Ticagrelor. As you know, Ticagrelor is a reversible ADP P2Y12 platelet receptor antagonist, but that doesn't mean reversible in terms of it just going away in a few minutes. As everyone knows, its effect lasts for about three to five days. Reversible, it refers to how it binds to that receptor. It binds reversibly, and therefore platelet transfusions aren't useful if a patient's just gotten ticagrelor, for example. Ticagrelor is very unlike clopidogrel and prasugrel. First of all, those are prodrugs. They need to be converted to actin metabolites. But other than that difference, they are irreversible antiplatelet agents. Their active metabolites bind irreversibly to the platelet and linger for the lifespan of the platelet, about seven to 10 days in general. So those are key differences, but those key differences have allowed the development of bentrasimab to specifically reverse ticagrelor's effect. And that's what we studied in the reversed trial in patients who were on ticagrelor who either needed emergency surgery or who were having life-threatening bleeding. That's great. That's great. I really appreciate the wrap up, and and I know Professor Bad that uh, for Bentrasima, this is not the the only study that you have presented. Uh, it has been it's a clinical program that you started since two thousand nineteen, with a first uh, uh, health volunteer studies. Can can you make kind of a summary of the you know all this this journey with Bentrasima since two thousand nineteen? A great question. So what I presented as a late breaking clinical trial at ACC in two thousand nineteen was the phase one trial of bentrasimab. Phase one, of course, is healthy human volunteers. What I presented at ACC now, the reverse of trial, is a phase three trial, so of actual patients, and a trial designed, hopefully, for regulatory approval. The phase one trial, which was also published in New England Journal of Medicine back in 2019, took healthy human volunteers and randomized them to bentrasimab or placebo. And it found that there was an immediate, within about five minutes, and sustained and potent reversal of Ticagrelor's antiplatelet effect, essentially restoring platelet function to normal. So in healthy human volunteers, the drug did what it was supposed to. Now, we tested it in a phase three trial in actual patients and found, fortunately, the same sort of effect on platelets. That is a rapid reversal and a sustained reversal and a very potent reversal of Ticagrelor's antiplatelet effects. So the drug did in patients what we saw it do in healthy human volunteers. Additionally, in the phase three trial, we looked for hemostasis. Now, unlike the phase one trial that was randomized, the phase three trial was not randomized. And the reason for that was at least our site investigators didn't feel comfortable randomizing because they'd seen the phase one data and they thought, well, I have someone with an intracranial hemorrhage. How am I going to randomize them to a drug that I know from the phase one works? And you can agree or disagree with that uh, uh, approach, but that's how our site investigators felt. And therefore, um, we didn't uh, think we could do a randomized trial. So at any rate, it's a single arm study, but we did look for hemostasis. So how did we do that? Well, of course, if we just asked the investigators, that would be one way, but we took it a step beyond to have independent adjudicators in a clinical events committee, or CEC, headed by Dr. Bob Giuliano from Brigham Women's Hospital in Boston, assess whether they thought, independent of, say, the surgeon treating the patient or the doctor treating the patient, was there hemostasis based on the medical records. And they judged the hemostasis to be effective 
in 100% of the surgical cases and 83% of the bleeding cases, which is better than what one would expect from historical controls. For example, 80% of the intracranial hemorrhage patients, they adjudicated as having effective hemostasis. So it wasn't 100%, but 80%, which again is better than what you would see in historical controls in terms of what happens to patients with intracranial hemorrhage when they're on Ticagua or, or even just in general having intracranial hemorrhage. And in the patients where we had head CT scans done serially, there are an independent core lab assessed that of the patients, 13 out of 16 had hematoma volume, intracranial hematoma volume that either was stable or in fact reduced. So, you know, that goes against what you typically see in folks if they've come in with a bad intracranial hemorrhage on Ticagrelor. So that's some objective evidence that hemostasis was indeed effective short of a randomized trial. That, that's a very nice explanation, and, and it's very interesting, you know, going from phase one to phase three, you know, phase two, very special, specific drugs. And I also would like to highlight that the uh, the use of of no you know no no placebo control is it was used also for the for drug reversal agents like uh, if I remember correctly these trials were just single arm studies so I think it's it's kind of accepted for this type of of reversal agents um, you you make a, a lot of uh, emphasis Dr Bar on the on the bleeding part kind of uh, you know as as a Practitioner, I will also ask, would like to like or to ask you also if you 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 know you reverse the effect antiplatelet effect of of ticagrelor so fast, you know, five minutes. If there is any issue with any ischemic event after the reversal uh, of the of the platelet function. Yeah, that's a terrific question. In the context of the phase one trial, we looked at lots of different platelet biomarkers for any evidence of rebound upon cessation of the infusion, and we didn't see that. So there was no sort of biological evidence of rebound at the platelet level uh, as assessed by a number of different assays. In this phase three trial, we looked for actual clinical events, and we didn't think that there were any serious thrombotic events, or for that matter, even serious allergic reactions that were associated with the infusion. Now, of course, these were sick patients. There were patients, a few that had myocardial infarctions, a few that had strokes, a few that had DVTs and that sort of thing. But as best we could tell and the investigators could tell, these weren't directly related to the infusion. So as best we can tell, again, in a non-randomized context, we didn't think that any of the ischemic events that were occurring were due to the reversal agent. And based on the biology, you wouldn't really expect it. I will say, however, in this context of giving a reversal agent, it does mean this patient who was on Ticagor, presumably for a good reason to prevent ischemic complications, isn't getting the protection that the Ticagor would have given, certainly for the duration of the infusion. But then if it's not resumed after the procedure, even after the procedure, there are increased risk of thrombotic events. So it's... Um, always the case in these patient populations that are bleeding that they're also at higher risk of ischemic and, and thrombotic and thromboembolic complications. Uh, but uh, as best we could tell, uh, the drug itself and the reversal wasn't contributing to that. But it is an advantage of this drug that you can, if it's otherwise clinically safe to do so, resume Ticagrelor or for that matter, some other ADP receptor antagonist, if you wanted a clopidogrel or something, you can resume it, you know, after the infusion and it does provide then antiplatelet effect. But if you don't do that, because maybe the patient still has ongoing bleeding or bleeding risk, uh, then for whatever reason they were on the Ticagrelor, they're not getting that benefit. So if they got a left main stent last week, now they have an intracranial hemorrhage and you reverse them because you don't want them to die from the intracranial hemorrhage. That makes sense. But if you feel like you can't resume the Ticagrelor, that might also be the right decision. But then, yeah, of course, they may have a left main stent thrombosis. And in many of these patients, if it's catastrophic bleeding, the aspirin might end up getting held as well. And that will further increase the risk of thrombotic uh, and ischemic complications. I, I think it's, uh, bleedings are always a tough situation for everyone. No, there is no always a correct answer and procedure, and there are no guidelines you sh that in detail for that. And I really appreciate, and uh, Dr. Bat, for your, your comprehensive answer. You have spoken a lot about the safety. You have spoken about the efficacy of the medication. So we have a medication which is kind of, uh, uh, we have, should highlight also that Pentrasimar is the first 
specific reversal agent for any antiplatelet therapy that we have on market. Uh, so which are the plans for, for, for Ventrasima? Because, uh, I mean, you have everything set up now, and which, which are the next steps that you're, you're envisioning with this uh, medication? You know, it's a great question. I mean, I think a lot of that will depend on what different regulatory agencies say. Do they feel this is sufficient data? Do they have questions, perhaps similar to the questions you raised? You know, will they want additional analyses from the reverse of trial? Probably yes. I mean, we still have to do our own additional analyses just, you know, for the sake of completeness and science and so forth. Uh, so it's highly likely that they'll want more uh, analyses. Might they want more data? But, you know, I can't predict that. That'll really depend on interactions between the regulatory agencies and the company that makes the drug. But, um, you know, my hope is that the reverse it trial data, if the drug gets approved, will provide sufficient reassurance to physicians that they would feel comfortable using it, at least in situations where the alternative is potentially a life-threatening complication. Yes, I, I think, you know, Ventrosima uh, really add uh, another advantage for Tecadilor, which has a specific uh, reversal agent. Uh, it, it has been a wonderful discussion, uh, Professor, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, and from our PCR and uh, our intervention and our PCR online, we are really happy to have you. And congratulations for another series of uh, clinical completed clinical trials, one more for, for your collection. Well, thank you. That's nice of you to say, and keep up the terrific work you're doing. Thank you.